Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and today I'm back with another Epic Universe update, all thanks to Bio Reconstruct on Twitter. Follow him for amazing updates, aerial updates of the mostly Florida theme parks, but sometimes he comes out here to the West Coast occasionally. But yeah, SeaWorld, Universal, Disney, he does it all. So follow him on Twitter. His handle will, will be out here throughout the entire video. But yeah, here is an update on Epic Universe. An aerial update is there is obviously some clouds in the skies, you some shady spots, but it's completely drained from the hurricane. Work is moving fast and furious, literally. And uh, yeah, they're back at it. They only had like a, a couple day delay there. I'm sure they made that up easily. And as you can see, more and more of the side continues to get developed with massive show balloons. You can see the classic Monsters 1 and the Forbidden Journey show building um in there now we're we'll start over here with the classic monsters land though you can see the entrance porter fully defined and ready to go in the classic monsters land which is fantastic there's a building next to it which will be a I believe a restaurant or gift shop that you can that can be accessed outside of the up outside of the land in the hub area then the building in the foreground on the very bottom is the massive show building for the main e-ticket attraction and the building and the white building to the left is the station or maintenance bay for that rumored mock spinning coaster and there's a whole bunch of footers you can see very tiny footers but they're footers in that small section of what, what will be a family or maybe even extreme spinning coaster uh theme to potentially a werewolf uh, series, so we, we'll be watching that very closely as it goes in development. Here are more of those tracks for the, or the footers for the um, proposed uh, spinning coaster there. You can see the footers leading over into, there's an area of orange fencing. That area uh, has some footers next to it to the left hand side. There's a whole bunch of areas of little tiny orange fencing and footers uh, for what will be a decent sized coaster in this area. This was replacing a theater attraction that was, or the amphitheater attraction that was supposed to be, that was proposed in the concept art after the success of Velocicoaster. There are universal landing coasters everywhere, which is fantastic. In this particular picture, you can see by we construct numbered uh, a couple of sections of the park forest. So you can see in the foreground, number two is where the main area of the classic monsters will be number one will be the e-ticket drag the dark ride or frankenstein dark ride number six is the actually the wizarding world wizarding world attraction five is the hub and four is the entrance to uh the wizarding world attraction and three is again in the main hub so kind of a horizontal view uh a lateral horizontal view of this uh, park which is again is massive and it's growing really really quick, quick even with the hurricane here's a quick close-up of that building this is the restaurant or gift shop or both building that will be accessed from outside the hub the way this park works is potentially rumored to work is you know the hub will be free for all and then you pay to get into each land and each land will be its own or world will be its own thing so if the, some of the worlds are at capacity, like Super Nintendo World or Classic Monsters Land, then they'll, each one will have like a room, or a shop, or restaurant they can still dine at if the land is full. I'm not sure if that's what they're still doing, but that's how it was rumored before. Here's an overall area of the, you see a, a restaurant there for, I believe this is the Classic Monsters, no, this is the Wizarding World. This is the prison world. You can see to the foreground, you see a kind of well-defined rest rumored restaurant or gift shop that's going to be there for the. This is again the the visiting world's gift shop that's going to be outside of the land itself. Then you see the main e-ticket right over there, um, with its extended queue and flu network starting to be built out. Ministry of Magic attraction, which is going to be amazing. It's going to use a Upgraded version of the Spider-Man slash Transformers rides, that scoop vehicle. This one's going to be able to 
go up and down really fast, like an elevator, like the elevators in the Ministry of Magic do, and to go floor to floor, side to side, be very, very awesome. Here in this shot, you can see again that room running gift shop. I think this one will be a gift shop to the right hand side. <laughs> so, again, it's the finding features and then the portal to the Ministry of Magic Wizarding World Land, which is said to be in the Ministry of Magic of France. But then, when you go into you use the flu network to get into the British Ministry of Magic, which is where the ride will take place. And you'll see your familiar characters there. You know, exit right back out through the flu network to the France Ministry of Magic. So, get the best of both worlds there. Here is a close look at the extended queue and entrance to the. This will be the France Ministry of Magic. And uh, to the e ticket attraction here. Which is fantastic. Now, the rumored second attraction looks to have been cut. That was the Harry Potter VR broomstick attraction. Universal execs said that uh, decided that that uh, was not going to be too much fun of an attraction, which it didn't sound like it. So I'm glad that they cut it. So it's just expansion space now. There will also be a theater uh, in the for the French Ministry of Magic there. Over here is the How to Train Your Dragon area, which is by far the largest world in the park. Upsides of the main hub, and you can see the trenches that concrete trench, the really only thing that's kind of filled in there. That will be where the coaster kind of dives underwater. The family friendly how to train your dragon coaster, which I assume you'll be training your own dragon on, you'll be on dragon back, as they say in House of the Dragon, going throughout the land. There's the great hall in the middle, we'll get some closer supports of that. We have the splash battle attractions and the flat rides that go there. This will be a massive family land. It will be very cool, but it will be have rides for all ages, which is fantastic. There's, there's going to be a room with what, like 942-seat theater right in this particular plot right here, this big flat plot. Hopefully, um, I think the rumor is they want to bring that Beijing show all the way here, the, the show that's in Beijing out to the states here in Orlando, and I hope so, because that land looks absolutely fantastic, or that show looks fantastic. Here's that close-up I promised you of the Great Hall. You can see the massive support structure right there. This would be quite an amazing restaurant. Look just like the ones, just like the hall from the movies. And even if you've never seen the movie like I haven't, I'm sure it'll be a, just a massive, thematic, immersive environment to dine in. Almost reminds me of like, you know, the Harry Potter hall where they all dine in. Looks just anything grand and really thematic like that will be quite the dining experience. And I will be very excited to see POVs and go on that myself when it opens in 2025. Here are some coaster supports. So you actually see two sets of coaster supports in the middle or the top. You see the Great Hall. In the middle, you see the coaster supports in the water feature area for. The How to Train Your Dragon Land, and on the bottom, you actually see the supports for that massive dual racing coaster, that space-themed dual racing coaster that'll be in the um, main section of the. A it won't be in a land; it'll be in the main hub section. And that area seems to be around the turnaround for that particular coaster. You see all those supports down there. That that structure that is for that dueling racing coaster, which will be really cool as well. And the, fastest coaster on property. Here's an overview of the How to Train Your Dragon area. This, um, again, this is particularly where the flat rides will be. The splash button, can see, kind of see the splash button all taking place, I believe, right where number three is. I think that's a great hall, but kind of around there is the, or no, that's the theater. The splash battle will probably be around where the number one is, and another flat ride where number two is. And again, but see how land, large this land is? It's like, what is this, like maybe 14, 16 acres? This is humongous. Um, again, certainly the largest land in the park, in the largest park that Universal has ever built, which is very exciting. Taking one last look at the, I believe this is the hub section. Yeah, this is for an attraction, the small attraction in the hub. You can see the foundations for that right there. And the rest of just the hub buildings and infrastructure um we'll see a good look at the fountains of the hub a little bit later 
But yeah, the hub itself will be pretty large as well. And it can kind of be counted as a land because you have a couple of attractions, including the massive coaster, you have the water show, um, the end park hotel will be there as well. Um, and it'll just be quite, quite nice and very large. So there'll be definitely, again, it, it kind of counts as a land as well. There'll be plenty of shopping and dining, and you can access kind of a gift shop from each world over there as well. Here's the the foundations for a water-based carousel type ride that is currently under construction, and I mean the foundations are almost are just about done there. Can't wait to see this one rise. This will be enclosed in that beautiful glass dome structure that they have in the concept art, which is fantastic. So that'll be a nice, and this will be a very nice piece of art because it'll be on the water and it'll just be very gorgeous, very nice setting and nothing too intense, just a carousel, water carousel type, right? They have some around the world built. This is also potentially a mock rise structure. And here, the foundations continue. For the main water feature, this will have, this will have an amphitheater next to it. This is kind of a world of color type fountain show. The hotel is, is right behind it. You can see it being to the left, being under construction. This will be a daytime and potentially nighttime show as well. And yes, uh, be a kind of a world of color, world of color light. Be fantastic. It might mesh with the fireworks too. Here are supports for that very hotel we were just talking about. This is the, or the permits say the Helios Grand Hotel, Universal Helios Hotel. Matching that space thing. This will be the park's centerpiece hotel. It'll have 500 rooms. And in the permits, they have a rooftop deck and lounge, which is rumored to be a VIP on the wall, like a viewing spot, maybe not VIP, a viewing spot for the rumored fireworks show that is supposed to happen behind the hotel, which would be a perfect premium experience. I wouldn't be surprised if Universal only allowed you to go up there if you're staying in the hotel, maybe even staying in, a, in the premium portion of the hotel, and probably a premium hotel in itself. <laughs> Lastly, here, our last set of photos are going to focus on the main racing coaster, the, again, the fastest and one of the largest coasters, or will be the largest and fastest coaster in the park when it opens. One of the largest and fastest attractions at the resort, definitely the fastest, but one of the largest too. You can see the turnarounds right there, all those supports have, you can kind of see them turning, making that turn. And this is when the coaster will be having that, it has like an out and back situation, out and back in coaster terms, when the track goes out and then comes right back. That's what's kind of going on here. This could potentially go maybe 70 miles per hour. This would be a mock rides coaster. Lots of shipments of track have already been on site for these mock ride coasters. Um, because there's multiple. The spinning coaster, the rumor spinning coaster is supposed to be developed by Mock, as well as this coaster is supposed to be developed by Mock as well. So Mock is having a great relationship with Universal after Universal has partnered with Intamin for its last two coaster projects. Um Velocity Coaster and Hagrid's, and rumored to be an intimate coaster here for the Hollywood Drift in Hollywood. But yeah, look at all the support. There's just hundreds of supports right there. That's incredible. And here's an overview of the state of the, yeah, probably the station. Yeah, this is definitely the station of the coaster and launch sections. Also, for those of you wondering why I'm not covering Super Nintendo World, that is because there's so many uh, pictures of such a big update. I want to separate it into two and make Super Nintendo World its own video. That'll be coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Super Nintendo World at Epic Universe will be coming out tomorrow. Super Nintendo World in Hollywood will be coming out on Wednesday. But what do you guys think of the improvements and progress going on in Epic Universe here? A lot of stuff is under construction. A lot of stuff is vertical. They're definitely getting ready for their summer 2025 opening. Maybe some stuff will open in 2024. We'll have to see. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like this video. If you, if you like this video, press that thumbs up button. Subscribe for more theme park updates. And subscribe for the Super Nintendo World update from Epic Universe coming tomorrow. And as always, have a fantastic day.